Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another episode of Asteroid Update. Since we've been on the air last, we've had a busy month. NASA has announced two new missions to asteroids. The US government has published plans for how it would deal with an asteroid uh, impact scenario. And in the last week, an asteroid 2017 BS-32 was discovered two days before it passed within 0.1 lunar distances. 30,000 miles or 50,000 kilometers from the Earth. That was a pretty close shave with practically no warning. But to talk in more detail about the larger developments, I wanted to talk to uh, an, a guest who is an expert on such things, uh, an, an astronaut who I've previously had on the show, extremely qualified. He's flown in Soyuz, Space Shuttle, Mir, and the International Space Station. And now he is the guy in charge of the B612 Foundation. So, hello! Today we have Ed Liu with me today from B612 Foundation. How are you? I'm doing good, Scott. It's good to be here. I'm so glad to have you here because, of course, you know, you were one of the first people to really come onto my channel and uh, talk about uh, asteroids. Mm -hmm. And, and I got to flail with a rocket. Yes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but you are a rocket pro, and you're also an asteroid pro, right? B612 is, you know, asteroids is your business, so to speak. Indeed. Our, our whole reason for being is to prevent ourselves from being hit by these things. Right. And so it's January 2017. It's been an interesting month in terms of asteroids, I guess. We've had a bunch of space, a bunch of NASA mission profile uh, proposals come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a... Overall, things are going really well from the, on the planetary defense front. Planetary defense being the sort of science and technology uh, of protecting the Earth from being hit by asteroids. So there's been a lot of progress in the last few years, but uh, in particular, we've had a couple of big announcements this uh, January. Um, first, the um, uh, U.S. government is beginning to organize among the various agencies that care um, regarding planetary defense. So the agencies that are uh, coordinating uh, involved not only just NASA, but um, FEMA, Emergency Response, um, Department of Defense, and, uh, and so on. And they're looking at how they would coordinate, what is, what is their wish list of things that they want to get done to protect the Earth from being hit by asteroids. Or deal with the consequences of or an impact. A, if it was or up. if something happens, uh, you know, how do you respond? And uh, we completely agree with their list of recommendations, number one being that the first thing you have to do is find and track these things. We need to do a, uh, we really need to finish the job of knowing where the asteroids are and where they're going. And that'll give us the notice that we need to deal with um, the very larger asteroid impacts, the ones that could kill a lot of people. Yeah. So yeah, we just had the results of the NASA Discovery Mission, uh, you know, Selection. Selection, yes. yes. And there were five five options, mm -hmm. and three of them at least were related to asteroids. One of which we were really interested in, that was mm -hmm. NEOCAM. Yes. Um, by the way, what happened is NASA selected two visits to asteroids. Which are uh, really which, interesting. Which are great. Now, um, unfortunately, they weren't able to select for flight just yet the mission called NEOCAM which is to place an infrared space telescope out into uh, a position called uh, a Lagrange point, right. uh, a stable Lagrange point, where it can survey for, for asteroids. Um, again, it's a mission really to find and track them. They were able, which is a good thing, to keep the, uh, the money flowing at a smaller level, a reduced level, to keep the project going to address whatever issues they found, and so that the project is still alive, but it, it, it still, but it hasn't had a go-ahead for funding. So we are really hopeful that Congress will find a way to, to fund this mission, to fund an infrared space telescope for finding and tracking it. Especially in light of this latest interdepartmental plan that was put out. It fits in very well with their it's, plan. It fits in very neatly. And um, what we think Congress ought to do is appropriate the money for this. Um, it's what's called a directed mission. And, uh, and that is something I, that I, I know that our friends at NASA are uh, looking towards. Because the reason that, um, the, uh, the, where, what has happened is planetary defense has been shoehorned into the uh, science mission directorate at NASA. Now, there's a lot of science involved. There's in a lot of science. But the reasons for doing this are not wholly scientific. Meaning, protecting the Earth isn't, quote, science. So it's when, just good idea. Exactly. So when you 
evaluate missions based upon purely scientific criteria, you can shortchange missions that also protect the Earth and protect people. Provide many other benefits. Exactly. And those don't get counted uh, when you, when you ju look, just look at the scientific merits of things. So one of, the, one of the things that we hope they're able to do is to, is to judge the bigger picture on this and to fund it appropriately. I mean, so yeah, I mean, the other two missions, they were to Psyche, which is mm -hmm. an asteroid, an iron asteroid, mm -hmm. which we believe the crust has been blown off it. It's an iron Just the core. core of it. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, impact's in there for sure. And the other is Lucy, which will visit the Trojans. Mm -hmm. Quite uh, a number of asteroids. And do Sort of a grand past. tour of, yeah. of asteroids. I believe it's named after Lucy, the uh, fossil skeleton of a very early hominid. I would heard that it is not an acronym, which oh. I find wonderful because I hate acronyms. Oh, what about Osiris Rex? That's the oh, best acronym oh, ever. Oh, jeez. I worked at NASA for many years and I hate acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, Lucy... It's named after the, the, the early hominid, right? But that itself was named after Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. So there. <laughs> so technically it's named after a Beatles song, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> As opposed to the Elton John version? As opposed to the Elton John version. <laughs> Or the William Shatner version. Oh, that was the best. Yeah, <laughs> the best, the, mo the most <laughs> striking your, version. Depend, depending upon your definition of best. <laughs> okay. Let's get, let's get back to the benefit to humanity to not hearing that song. <laughs> <laughs> we are not going to take his songs and throw them into the sun. <laughs> well, we'll play them incessantly unless you pay us. <laughs> Okay, that's that's actually really funny stuff. I'm just trying. When, what else can we what get? What were in? we talking about? I don't know. We were talking. <laughs> I was just trying to cover the asteroid mission. One other thing I would like to mention is that we at B612 Foundation are really looking at um, you know, this whole problem writ large. One of the other things pointed out in the um, the sort of wish list of government agencies uh, from uh, their their goals for planetary defense is the importance of not just Spotting them with your telescopes, mm -hmm. but calculating where they are going, you know, and that is a bit of a subtle problem because All you the really up. you have many observations, and then but uh, what you're really trying to do is piece together an orbit and calculate where those asteroids are going to be, and that's actually a challenging uh, computational problem. And it's one of the things that we're looking at at B612 is uh, ways to do this and ways to break down the data so we really understand what which ones are of concern and what are um, really what's happening here where where might they hit if that particular if a particular asteroid is of concern and so on mm -hmm. uh and th one of the other things that we're doing right now which is really interesting is that um the asteroids that could cause damage uh on the ground are can be as small as uh, only say 40 40 meters across right the the asteroid that hit in tunguska in 1908 on june 30th uh took out an area roughly the size of the la basin and it was only approximately that size. So an asteroid doesn't need to be very large to cause an awful lot of damage. It's coming in very fast with a lot of energy. Exactly. And so we're exploring areas to find even these smaller asteroids, which won't be seen as well by some of the current planned projects, such as, well, like NeoCam or uh, by the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. LSST. Yes. So there are some promising new technologies which we're investigating that, that could help us find these smaller asteroids. Um, which you want to find in addition to the larger ones, of course. And so, you know, you're talking about the follow-up. I mean, it's not just following up and finding out when you've got close approaches, because you might be following up and then figuring out when you can get radar, uh, good, good position for radar. Yeah. Uh, and then if you did potentially have a very close approach, you might want to start looking at potential launch windows. Yes. It's all about calculating accurately the orbit and, yeah. and reducing the error in the orbit, because... Mm -hmm. That is the tool that you have to predict where that thing is going to be in yep. the future. And if, if you know that an, an asteroid is going to be very, very close to Earth, then, you're, then you need to start thinking carefully about, like, is it actually going to hit us? When will we know? Um, what are our options if it does? When do we need to make a, make a decision by? When's our last chance to deflect it if we need to? Those sort of things all come into the equation of what do we do? Right. It's conceivable, for example, that you could get an orbit on an object and the precision may not be great, but there might be a potential for an impact, but mm -hmm. it's gone beyond the, the mm -hmm. window of opportunity for discovery. However, you might then look and then realize the next window of, of opportunity would put you past the window of opportunity to deflect it. That would be so. A, then you've, you're faced with a decision. Right. How do you deal with these mm -hmm. something so, that's potentially mm -hmm. in the dark? Or can you build 
can you turn some other telescope on it so and get more data? Right. Uh, get a further measurement, or even uh, as sometimes the case, you can look for older observations where it's actually in the data but no one noticed it. Yeah, because and that's been done before. They're called precoveries. Yeah, as opposed to discoveries. It, indeed, you know, in the old days, people would get asteroids on their uh, images of stars and mm -hmm. stuff, and they would be mad at it because it ruined their nice picture. Yeah, sometimes you can go back to some of this older data and actually find that, oh, look, had we known about it, mm -hmm. th it's there. And, yeah. and you get an extra data point, which allows you to uh, more accurately calculate the orbit because you now have another place that you knew it went through at a particular time. Yeah. So, thanks, Ed. That's been, you know, this has been a really great one. It's great to get to see you in person and not have you crashing spaceships. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Those were virtual spaceships. Those were virtual spaceships, but asteroids are real and they're a real threat. And we're glad that we have smart mm -hmm. people like you actually looking like looking for this, looking out for this problem in their daily lives. Well, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure talking. Uh, I love talking about asteroids. Oh, so do I. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's they're they're really cool things because they are remnants of the early solar system. They tell us about the history of the solar system. They are. Uh, they can run into us, so you want to make sure that doesn't happen. And they are also places for exploration and discovery. They are places where resources exist for future exploration of space. And I think overall, quite a fascinating subject. Yeah, thank you. Fly safe. So there you have it. Once again, thanks to Ed Liu for uh, giving us some of his time and sharing some of the information. We will, of course, have be back in a month or so with another guest. And, of course, we're now looking forward to Asteroid Day on June 30th later this year. But stay tuned for more information. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.